Hey everybody, how's it going? So let me uh, just move my old video here. Now, um, last night I was trying to read all of my JSON files for the tiny story repository that I loaded, and it was going so slow that it was ridiculous. And I didn't know why it was going so slow. I thought maybe it was Microsoft Defender. I tried to turn that off, it was still going slow. I spun it up to like, I think 31 or 32 processes. It was still going slow. I'm like, oh, I do not know what is going on. So I'm just like, whatever. I'll just leave it overnight. Maybe my SSD drive is dying. I don't, I, I don't know. And in the morning I came back and it had failed to read four of the 800,000 JSON files were invalid. And that uh, it crashed. So I copied it uh, from my SSD, if you look here. Um, this, this is my SSD drive, and this is my NVMe drive, and then this is my spinning platter drive. I don't really use this because I haven't run out of space here yet. Uh, but this is much bigger, so if I, if I do fill up my SSD drive, I'll start copying things here. But the point is... Um, Obviously, an NVMe drive is faster than S SSD is faster than a platter drive. So I moved it here. I turned off Microsoft Defender for that directory. And now the script that was taking an unbelievable amount of time to take to run is now running in a reasonable amount of time. So that's, uh, that's good. So um, what I want to... I'll, I'll show you what that output looked like. So I need, I need a uniform way to refer to parts of speech um, by a numerical value uh, in order to be able to process these. So uh, this is a, a string version of Python code which creates a tuple and that maps to a number. And then if you come down Stop, stop scrolling. Uh, if you come down, then we have the, the mapping in the other direction. Maybe this is redundant, but that's fine. I, you know, I want both of them to exist. And then if you come down here, uh, here's just a counter of the, the different parts of speech that I read. Now, I got rid of punctuation, things that don't match a certain uh, regex pattern. I want basically words, but I do tolerate some apostrophes, like the apostrophe S, but generally speaking, it's just, it's just words. So the word A, for example, appeared 4,374,683 times, right? And then, um, I don't know, what would we expect to be? Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter, you, you, you get it. So now what we want to do is we want to find out what words give us the best coverage. Now, I was playing around with this a little bit. I, I hadn't really decided. What, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to choose a stream of text. There's not going to be any set reduction. It's just if the word the appears twice, that's fine. It'll appear twice in the stream. Um, which, I mean, if a student is reading text and the word appears twice, then they're going to read it twice and they're going to understand it both times. So maybe that really does make more sense. Uh, I, I think blocks of about 50 words is good. It's a nice round number. And then we uh, raise it to the fourth power. Uh, because the block is always 50, then it's the same as doing a ratio. We just aren't going to divide it by whatever, two. 150 squared, whatever that is, uh, we can leave it as an integer, which should make it easier to calculate, theoretically. <laughs> so um, we might have to worry about overflow, but you know what? That's that's fine. Uh, this was giving me some conflicting results. Now it may have been that I tweaked these numbers. That is entirely possible. I don't I don't know the answer to that, but. I want to make sure that I am uh, that I'm getting consistent results. I, I need I guess what I'm saying is I didn't write this code. ChatGPT wrote this code. I need to make sure that it's doing what I think it's supposed to do. So I don't think we need any of this.
prepare data for CUDA. You know what? I don't think I want to delete this because I don't know how to call this thing. I am going to make up here um, these numbers that I expect to behave in a certain way. Three. I think that for the purposes of testing, lower values will work here. Set size. I don't like this. Uh, all right. So max value. So I'm, I'm just going to do an integer array. Maybe that's slightly memory inefficient, but I don't think that this is the hard part of the program. So uh, we're going to say uh, random set like this. Now, I might come back later and change how I define this, but for right now, we're just going to take, um, no, 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 no. Be return zero for i in range, um, no, not set count, max value. And then we'll do secrets dot rand below two. Uh, so yeah, let's see what this does. Print rand set and exit, exit. So show me what you're doing, not you. Okay, one 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 zero 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 one one one. So a uh, one represents that the something is there. A zero represents that something is not there. Okay, so now we're going to have um, it's very very similar. Um, so my story. It's not a set uh, stream. Now it's it's gonna like I said it's gonna be very similar, but it's going to be array size, and then this is going to be max value. And I think we should do max value plus ten because I want to test things being over. Because we might have some undefines, and uh, we need to be able to tolerate that. Okay, so all the sets equals. And then it's going to be rand set for i in range set count. Okay, and now we're going to define our scoring metric. This is you, you, you go away. All right. Uh, so yeah. So scoring CPU. And it's going to take uh, one set and the uh, stream, like this. Now, the first thing we are going to do is assert that the length of <sighs> we need block size equals 50. So the length of the stream needs to be, yes, like that. It has to perfectly break up into, uh, into blocks. So current count equals 0, running total equals 0, and we're going to say <laughs> um, okay, this is a temporary debugging thing. We're just going to say count equals zero. I want to make sure that I'm hitting every every block. Um, and that's okay, because this is not our final code. So we're going to say for i in range length of st st stream, length of stream, um, we're going to start at zero, and we're going to jump by, uh, yeah, block size. Yeah, you see, AI isn't all bad. What the hell? OK. Um, maybe it is all bad. OK, so 
for j, the current count is going to be defined here, and it's going to reset to 0. So for j in range i to i plus plus block size. Now here, here is where we put the CNT. CNT plus equals 1. And like I said, this is redundant. This is redundant. We're just checking ourselves. That's all that we're doing. So now if if one set of stream of j then uh, current count plus equals 1 and then when this is done we're going to say running total plus equals current count to the fourth power um, this will overflow 32-bit operations be aware that shouldn't be a problem for Python, which has arbitrary integer precision, but it might be a problem if we use the 32-bit register inside of the GPU. So, but should fit in a 64-bit, not 54, just fine. All right. Now, at the end, we want to say assert cnt equals array size. That just means we didn't screw anything up, <laughs> and we looked at uh, every every value. And then we're going to return. What are we going to return? We're going to return running total. All right. So now we're going to say expected values equals, and it's just going to be scoring CPU of all the sets I comma my story stream for I in range set count. That looks right to me. Um, st equals time dot time en equals time dot time and we're going to say print processing time CPU and let's see what that says list index out of range. Now you see that's just making me sad. Okay, what have we got here? One set of stream of... Oh! Oh, 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 okay, okay. This is valid. So, um, current number equals stream of j if cn is less than length of one set and one set stream of j. Let's see. That is completely legit, and I'm glad I tested it. Okay. So let's see here. Processing time CPU 0 0.21 seconds. That's a little bit too fast. Uh, am I overdoing it? Run. I mean, I'm not trying to torture myself, but I mean, I I want I want to make sure that you know it is actually faster running on the CUDA core. Um, so it needs to be just long enough to be painful. I think I overdid it. Seven seconds. Let's target. Um, let's target five seconds. So five hundred divided by seven point two eight seven nine seven. Uh, let's just say uh, 69 sets. It doesn't have to be exact, but having it take about five seconds should be able to show us the benefit without torturing us while we're trying to develop. That's that's uh, you know what I'm going for here. So that looks pretty good. Um, now I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't really know how to do this. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not happy that I don't know how to do this, uh, but 
Okay, initialization do not change. Okay. Um, CPU coding version. All right. Um, I'm going to hope that ChatGPT knows how to do this. Oh, I'm looking for a song and I beginning to lose all faith, but I thought maybe it appeared in this movie. I'm sorry. It's completely unrelated to what I'm doing. So, um, yeah. I have this code. I would like to run it on CUDA um, using the same values and compare the results to make sure they are as expected. If possible, I would like to minimize the number of times I copy uh, my story stream from RAM to VRAM. All right. Okay, I have this code. Uh, let's let's uh, let's see if it knows how to do it. Uh, yeah, and it should it should see that I'm using number, number. I would like to run it on CUDA using the same values and compare the results to make sure they are as expected if possible. I'd like to minimize the number of times I copy. Yeah. Okay, to adapt your Python code for running on a CUDA-enabled GPU, we need to make several modifications. The goal is to leverage parallel processing capabilities of the GPU while minimizing data transfer. I think it understands just exactly what I want. Okay, so data transfer optimization. To minimize data transfers, we'll transfer my story stream and all the sets to GPU memory only once. Since these arrays are read-only within the computation, this should be efficient kernel function. We'll write a CUDA kernel function for storing the computation. This function will be executed by multiple threads in parallel on the GPU. That is exactly what I want. Properly allocated and deallocated GPU memory is crucial to avoid memory leaks. I have had this problem and had to reboot my computer because of it. Parallel execution. We'll organize the computation in a way that maximizes parallel execution while respecting CUDA's limitations. Finally, we'll transfer the results <coughs> back to the CPU memory for the final output. So, other initializations, beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay, so we are gonna copy this. I don't think we need the original. Uh, expected values, GPU results. Uh, expected values, GPU results. Um, I would like to actually print the GPU results if I could. I just I just like to see it. Uh, GPU results, and I'd like to see the expected values. Um, let's see what it does. All right, so it should take about five seconds to evaluate it on the CPU, and then. Okay, discrepancy. Oh, God damn it. Okay, it, it goes faster, but if it's not giving me the same value, hmm, grid size 69 will likely result in GPU underutilization to, to low occupancy. Discrepancy between. All right. Uh, yeah, these numbers are not even close. What is going on? All right, let's see if we can figure out what the discrepancy is here. I would expect this to be the same. See, it doesn't matter if it's fast. If it's giving me the wrong damn value. Uh, 
Okay. Is it like just in a different order? No, no, these numbers aren't even comparable. Now, could it be an overflow thing? Overflow I can deal with. Overflow I understand. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, it 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 doesn't matter if it's fast if it's the wrong value. Discrepancy between. Okay, let's look at this code. I think that this code is not doing what we expect it to do, and maybe we can see why. For J in range, block size. IDX. Uh, J is less than length stream and stream. So the GPU results are, they're not like a little bit lower. They are way lower, right? But it is returning a number of different IDX. What do you mean unexpected argument? Stub. Atomic add results IDX. IDX is our counter. Scoring. Oh, this is this is needed. This is like an internal loop thing. So for one set in all sets, um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the discrepancy is. The numbers being returned from the, from CUDA are much lower than the numbers from the CPU. Any idea what's wrong? I I hate relying on ChatGPT this much. I just, I don't know why it's not working. Ensuring that the indexing within the CUDA kernel is correct. Each thread is working on a different part of the data and indexing needs to reflect that. Make sure that the bounds checking is correctly implemented. Atomic operations. Ensure that the index passed to it is correct. How do I check? Ensure that there is no memory overlap or incorrect memory. I mean, this is your code. You gave me the code. Um, Okay, what if we took this, go away. What if we took this, wow, I use a lot of calculators. And divide it by this. Two hundred and ninety one. Um, we would expect about half of them to be present, right? So each block should be about 390,625. What is the maximum that, it, that can appear? Well, the maximum obviously would be 50 times 50 times 50 times 50. 
or 6.25 million. No, no, that's per block. That's per block, and we have an entire stream here. So we're expecting 25 times 25 times 25 times 25. Um, uh, times 10, what, what is that? Divided by block size of 50. So we're expecting about 7 billion each, right? 12 million. Well, this is just depressing. Length of one set. If IDX is length less than length of one set, then we go through the block size. Block size. What is the block size? Where does block size come from? The answer might be in here. Block size is passed in. Block size is 50. Okay, 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 that's that's right. So range is IDX times block size. Where does IDX come from? Wait a minute, is it only running the first block? Stop helping me. That would definitely explain why it was lower. No, 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 no. What if we didn't square anything? What if we were just counting blindly? I mean, something is breaking at somewhere, you know? It's counting much, many, many fewer. But these numbers should be more directly comparable. 1698. 292. OK. 292. It's probably running 256 threads. What if it's just taking one of the results? Are, is, is, that, is that reasonably comparable? All about 292. Pretty consistently, the results from, I hope if I could spell, pretty consistently the results from the GPU are about 1 292nd the size of the results from the CPU. Could this indicate that the problem is being broken into smaller chunks, but they are not properly recombining.
yeah, yeah, it's the results aggregation that I'm expecting. So scoring kernel, scoring kernel is called, but where are the results aggregated? CUDA atomic add results index CC. I think I think we can put it back. Okay. How are the results aggregated in the following code? In your CUDA code, the aggregation of results occurs in two key places, within each thread of the scoring kernel function and across all threads when updating the results array. Let's break it down. Now, obviously, this portion is working because we are getting results from each different branch. Look at how consistent these numbers are, and look at how consistent these numbers are. Scoring GPU function iterates over all sets in all sets. For each set, it launches the scoring kernel. If I can't figure this out, I'm just going to have to go on Stack Overflow or something. But I think we should take a stab at figuring out where the results are supposed to aggregate. OK, results D results copy to host. What is D results? CUDA dot to device results. Hmm, that looks like it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Where we got to follow this. Where are things getting copied to results? So results goes into the scoring kernel here. Results, show me where results is used. Results index cc times four. Length of one set. Where's the IDX? Where is the IDX coming from? IDX equals CUDA grid one. God, it would, it, it, would, it would be nice if I knew what the hell I was doing, honestly. Um, okay, IDX equals CUDA grid one. Return the absolute position of the current thread in the entire grid of blocks. N dimensions should correspond to the number of dimensions declared when instantiating the kernel. If n dim is 1, a single integer is returned. Okay, look, I'm hoping that I can just figure out the right question to ask. How does CUDA.GRID1 work in this example? Specifically, how does this result in iterating over the entire array? It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking because it doesn't. That's why. If index is less than length of one set. I think I just broke chat GPT. Okay. So where the hell is index coming from? Grid one. Try again. Grid one. I think that what in the hell? Grid, grid one, 
grid one. I don't see where a grid is declared or used anywhere else. CUDA. In CUDA programming, CUDA grid one is a function used within a kernel to determine the unique index of a thread in the grid of threads. Understanding how it works in your example requires a basic understanding of CUDA's grid of block architecture, which I do not have. Uh, the smallest unit of execution in CUDA, each thread executes a part of your kernel function blocks. Threads are grouped into blocks. All threads into blocks share data through shared memory and synchronize their execution to coordinate memory access. A grid consists of multiple blocks. The total number of threads launched for a kernel is the number of blocks in the grid times the number of threads per block. Computes a unique index for each thread across the entire this index okay okay so this is different in each case in your kernel example is used to assign each thread a unique index this index is used to partition the work among the threads each thread identified by How does it know? Scoring kernel. Set block size. Set count block size. The crucial aspect. I'm trying to find the error. There has to be an error. Set count. Why why is this why is this using a capital set count instead of it being block passed in? Set count block size. CUDA two device one set. For one set in all sets. Scoring kernel set count of block size. We don't we, we don't want set count. Or do we? Set count comma block size. Set count is a constant. For one set in all sets. Okay. Set count of block size. D1 set. Okay, so we have to copy the device. This is pure Python code here. Uh, D underscore stream. What is D stream? CUDA to device stream. Yes, that is correct. D underscore results. Results is just a bunch of friggin' zeros that we're going to write to. And then block size. One set. So we pass it. This is only used twice. So it auto magically executes somewhere between here and here. Right? So all it knows is the count of sets and the block size. This, this cannot be as hard as it seems. Set count and block size. This has got to be obvious. I'm sure if anybody's watching this video, they're probably laughing at me right now. This is probably so obvious what's missing. Okay, so one set, it's taking one set. Here's your one set. One set, one set, one set, one set. D one set, wait a minute. Where's D one set? Fake CUDA array. Oh, it's right here. Stream, results block size 
So it is doing something for every set. I have no doubt about that. Ah, okay, okay, okay. New plan. Let's simplify here. Secrets.rand below. Okay, uh, I'll say I. If I equals zero, then return this. Otherwise, return this. Now it's going to be angry, but we're going to pass I. And I want to see if the right set is being mapped. All zeros should return zero, whether it's CPU or GPU. Okay. Okay, so it's not mapping the correct set. Right? What is the length of this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 18, 27, uh, 36, 45. Okay, it's the right number of sets. Okay. Now, is it possible that it's accessing the wrong, um, if it equals negative one? Now, we would expect all zeros, right? In this case. Aha. It almost seems like it's writing to the wrong location in the GPU. Okay, if I equals two, now let's see if it's accessing the second set at all. And it is, it is accessing the second set. It's kind of annoying when it almost works. Let's see if it's accessing the last set. Okay, let's see how it's referencing this. Um, we can just logic this out. Set count block size Scoring kernel, Lakuta count. Okay, one set. Here, let's see if this is explained here. What do the array values in this refer to? Are they indices or M? The notation scoring kernel set count block size is your CUDA code used to configure and launch the CUDA kernel. The notation specifies the dimensions of the grid and blocks that the kernel will use when executed on the GPU. These are not indices, but rather define the execution configuration. Block size. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Where is block size defined? I think I figured out the problem. Um, Secrets that ran below in range, um, yeah. The block size is 50. I think it's only looking at the first 50. Let's, uh, let's test this. Okay, if CNT equals 50, then break. What? 
no, 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 that can't possibly be the issue. Because, look, these numbers are being spread out. Look at that. Those numbers line up. What the hell is this garbage? If these numbers line up, that happens if it only appears once. So it's writing wrong values. Shouldn't that make these numbers larger, not smaller? This is very bizarre here. How did I get on the wrong file? I must have clicked. Okay. Okay. Disable this code here. This is frustrating. What it's going to make me do is it's going to make me want to never change my uh, scoring metric. Okay. CUDA count single set. Let's start over again. And let's have it just be a single set. And you know what? If we have to copy the data multiple times, obviously, it's a speed up of a factor of 10. Uh, you know what? That's fine. So we're not going to have multiple sets. We're going to have one set. We're going to call it my set equals rand set. And we'll get rid of the i. OK, and then we won't have multiple sets. We're just going to have expected value my, my set. Yeah. Let's do a simplified example and see if we can make a little bit of progress this way. Why is this angry? Let's do a simplified version with one set. Please write CUDA code to do the following. Reusing the existing my set values. OK. To implement a simplified CUDA version of your scoring function for just one set, we can write a CUDA kernel that processes parts of my stream story in parallel. Each thread, if this, if this works, this is, it's, just, it's just duplicating my exact code here. I wish that it had said your existing code, but whatever. This, this is fine. I can just copy below it. Honestly, if I can get a speed up of 10, that's that's pretty good. Blocks, block size. Do we specify it's in it 64 somewhere? Okay, let's see here. Expected value. Let's see what it does. 
the results match. So let's make the, there is no set count in the simplified example. Let's make the um, array size this. Where's the set size? Oh, the set size is max value, right. Let's make a much bigger array size and run again. Okay, at this size, the processing time on the CPU and the processing time on the GPU are comparable and they match. So let's come over here and let's say uh, all the sets and then we will have a set count again. Okay, set. count equals, I don't know, 69. That's going to take like 50 seconds, isn't it? Let's make this smaller. Um, okay, and then I'm just going to say, okay, so expected values, we're, we're repeating what we did before. Um, all the sets, i for i in range set count. That is what we are expecting. So what are you angry about? Unexpected argument. Whatever. OK. Um, GPU result equals scoring GPU. You know, we're 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 gonna we're gonna run this every single time. We're going to GPU results scoring GPU all the sets i for i in range length all the sets. Okay, and then expected value. Rand set takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. Okay. Now, if this works, I think we can reuse the uh, story stream. Okay, it's a speed up by a factor of two and the results match. Now what we need to do is we need to Take the D stream, put it here. I'm going to take the D stream and put it here. Stream, stream, my story stream. Like that. And then we're going to say D stream, and there, there, won't, there won't be a story stream. Damn it. Um, stream length. Uh, okay, so set length of my story stream, D stream. All right. Unsupported operand type for int and device nd array. I must have passed something wrong. So set int If I can just get this working, you know, I, I I don't I don't have to be like a frigging expert if I can just okay. It seems to be working. I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty happy here. I just forgive me. I I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm an idiot. I just I want I want to see the values. So 
expected values and GPU results. Uh, and then I would expect the benefit from running it on the GPU to increase the bigger the array size is. So, okay, that's what I wanted. That is frigging beautiful. And do I really want to calculate this on, you know what? One time, one time, I can do it one time. I can sit here for 50 seconds just for my own edification to see that it is definitely working. Now, I would like to run a test case where it's all ones and all zeros. So let's do um, set count of, say, I don't know, like f f uh, five or something. And then we'll do um, all the sets of zero equals um, zero. This is just my uh, just my QA side showing here. Okay, Th this will at the very least this will ver verify that we're not going to have any overflow. Look at that! My God, that's beautiful. Okay, uh, I don't think we're going to continue to compute on the CPU because um, I now trust the results. So let's, this is the last step in trusting the results. One random run. I feel confident in saying we can delete this and then this will be our new CUDA count uh, code here. So the CPU and GPU results match. And everybody's happy. Um, let's try a much larger array size. How big is this? One, two, three, one, two, three. 100 million, right? And I don't think we need to calculate the CPU values anymore because I, I at this point I trust them. So expected values equals. I'm just gonna say zero. You know what? Let's just get rid of expected values altogether and then. Where else is it used here? So, okay. Comment it out. So let's see what it does with 100 million, which is actually more than I was planning on using, but um, I just want to see what the timings are, and I want to see that it works. I will admit this is taking a little bit longer than I expected, but I imagine that a lot of that is just the initialization time. A hundred million random numbers is actually quite quite a lot. Um, it's the actual calculation time because if we're going to be evolving a genetic algorithm, we can do the initialization once. Uh, actually processing this, oh my God, that's beautiful. That is that is way faster than even multi-threaded C++ code. So yes, I am I'm happy. Uh, no overflow, everything's good. I'm happy. Uh, I don't know how long this video has been going, but it should actually writing the genetic algorithm should probably be a different video. So uh, see ya.